welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new I am doing another story time that I've been wanting to share on my channel for a while I say that about all my story times because eventually I'd like to share all of them with you but this one is really funny it happened about a year ago and before I get into telling it make sure you are subscribed to this channel and seven days of slay which is my new collab channel I post on there every single Friday so make sure you are subscribed there and then you get to meet all my YouTube friends because we post every single day of the week and it's awesome but also, before I get into the story, I just want to shout out Best Fiends Forever for sponsoring this video. It is a gaming app. You guys have probably heard of the first one. This is in the trilogy series, and personally, I think this one's even better. I think it's a lot more fun. I did download the first one because so many other YouTubers shouted it out, and basically, it's the same characters, same storyline. You're still trying to slap the slugs and, like, defeat them and everything, but it's a different type of game. There's, like, a lot of differences from the first one and then this one, and I'm on level 51, so if you guys think you can beat me, definitely give it a shot. It's free to download. Again, it is free to download, so you're not missing out on anything by just trying it out. So I'll have the link at the top of the description, and it's a lot of fun. It's one of those games, personally, I like because I can't focus on anything for very long. I can't multitask. That's why I suck at games sometimes, but it's still challenging enough to where you want to keep playing, but it's simple enough where you can just play and not really have to think too much as you're like killing the little slug. So yeah, give it a shot and let me know what you guys think. Getting into today's story time, this, like I said, took place last year, pretty much exactly this time last year, actually, because it was the start of football season. So yeah, like uh, 12 months ago. My friends and I, we went to the football game, the first of the season, and around this time, my ex Gabe and I, we had just broken up. And so, if you guys have been following my channel for a while, you know who he is, you know that we dated for a very long time, you know that he cheated on me, and I found out once I moved back to California from Ohio after we did long distance. So, it was a very tricky situation for me to have to break up with him after leaving my family and everything like that, but I did, and when we first broke up, it was still like, eh, like we still saw each other and stuff. Not really because we wanted to, but you know how that goes. You have each other's possessions. Like I had a bunch of my stuff at his apartment because last year I was living in the dorm. So I didn't have a ton of room in my dorm and we were together and I would leave stuff at his house all the time, like dresses and shoes and like random stuff like that. So when we broke up, I met up with him, I told him to bring all of my possessions and we could have closure and just like get on with our lives. Of course, he didn't bring any of that stuff, so it took me months to actually get it back. I had to like beg him for it. And when I saw him, I tried to give his stuff back and I did, and I had the key to his apartment. So he had a spare key, this is very crucial to the story. He had a spare key to his apartment that when we were dating, he gave to me so I could just come over, whatever. I didn't really use it much because he was usually home when I went over. But I tried to give it back to him, and he freaked out, saying, hey, No, don't do this. Please keep the key. You have the key to my heart. Please keep the key to my apartment. And I was just like, no, you're crazy. I don't want your key. I have no use for your key. So finally, I forced it into his hand, and he took it back. But he told me, he said, Ali, I'm going to keep this key under the mat in front of my apartment. So if you ever decide you miss me, if you ever decide that you want to come over and see me, you'll know how to get inside. And I was just like, not likely, but that's that's a nice thought. Thank you. I just want my clothes back. You know, see ya. So I left, and about a couple weeks go by, and that's when I'm at the football game with my friends. They had come up to visit from Brentwood, which is where I'm from. It's about four hours south, and I was super excited. I think this was the first time I had visitors because I had only been living in Reading for about a month at this point, maybe like two months-ish. So anyways, they drove all the way up and they were going to stay with me in my dorm, which is super tiny. And I have a ton of stories from living in the dorms last year because they were so strict. You couldn't have people spend the night really. You could have one person of the same sex spend the night if you check them in, but other than that, like, you just couldn't do it. You couldn't have guys spend the night if you were a girl and vice versa, and you couldn't have like multiple girls spend the night. So basically, I was going to sneak all of them in except for one. So a couple of my girlfriends were going to be like stowaways in my dorm while I just checked in one, you know? And Gabe, my ex, he knew that. He knew they were coming up to visit. So when I saw him, because this was like a planned thing, he said, hey, if you and your friends want to stay at my apartment when they come up because there's more room, you're more than welcome to. And I was just like, yeah, um, not likely. Again, thanks, but no thanks. We'll be fine. So they came up. 
we're at the football game, we're having a good time. And I was really frustrated around this point because I still hadn't got my clothes back. And that's all I wanted for my ex, Gabe. I wanted my clothes, it was getting cold, he had a bunch of my sweaters, and so my friends were like, you know what, Allie, when we're up here, you know, we can go with you because that way he's not going to cause a scene if we're all there. He's not going to hold your things captive anymore. You know, you can just be in and out of there. We'll be right in the car waiting. And I was like, okay, you know, that sounds good. So it was a Friday night and I texted him while we're at the game. I said, hey, do you think that I could come by tonight and get my things? And he always told me like, hey, anything you ever need, I'll be here waiting for you with open arms. And I had been asking for my things back and I thought that he would take up any chance to see me, right? But he was just being super sketchy, not really giving me a yes or no answer. Turns out he was in Reno, Nevada partying. Like he hadn't been to school the whole entire week. He'd just been out there turning up. Came back with a tattoo and that's, that's a whole nother video. But anyways, I found that out and I was just like, okay, whatever, forget about it. And he didn't want me to know right away that he was there because he was trying to impress me. He wanted me to think that he was being a good kid, going to school, just missing me. But really he was out there doing God knows what, right? So finally I'm like, just whatever, forget it. Sorry I asked, I'll just get my things another time, I guess, if you will ever give me back my clothes that you've had for months. And he's like, no, 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 wait, Allie, the key under the mat, you can use it. You and your friends can go in, seriously, make yourself at home. You can eat there, you can sleep there, you're more than welcome to. I know you don't have a lot of room in your dorm. And I already told him no the first time, so I was like, no, thank you, I really appreciate the thought, but I just want my stuff back. And he's like, that's fine, just go there, grab your stuff, it's cool, you know, I'll, I'll see you when I get back, hopefully. And I was like, no, but I, I want my things, so thanks. So I told my friends we were planning on going over there after the game to grab my belongings and just go back to my dorm and call it a night. So around this time at the football game, I get a text, actually all of my friends, we all get texts from these guys that we went to high school with and I need to give them fake names. We're gonna call them Michelangelo and Romeo, I don't know where I got those names from, but that's gonna be their names. So they went to high school with us. It was not the high school I graduated at because I graduated in Ohio, I lived there for like one year, but it was the high school that I grew up with, like freshman through junior year, that's where I went to high school, and then I lived there in middle school and all that. So I was like, I'm from Brentwood, put it that way, and these guys were from Brentwood, we knew them for a while, but we weren't like best friends with them by any means, it was just sort of random that they hit us up, and they were like, hey, what are you guys doing tonight? You wanna kick it? Let's turn up, let's chill, and we were like, yeah, cool, like we don't have plans, like that'd be nice, but we're all the way in Reading, which is like four hours from you guys. And they were like, yeah, we don't care, we'll drive up. We didn't think they were serious, okay? We thought that they were kidding because that's a pretty far drive. Most people would plan that in advance like my friends did, so they would have ample time to drive. It was also pretty late, so that meant they weren't going to get here until around midnight because it was like, I don't know, like seven o'clock-ish or whatever. And we're just like, okay, yeah, sure. And we didn't think they were gonna drive up. We weren't talking to them. We didn't have any interest in these guys. We weren't gonna hook up with them. We just didn't really understand what was in it for them to drive that far. But they did, a couple hours go by and they're like, hey, we're passing through Sacramento. Hey, we're an hour away. And we're like, oh my God, they're actually about to come here. So we were a little bit frantic, especially myself, because I was like, what am I gonna do? Where's everybody going to sleep? I can't fit, you know, three or four girls in my dorm along with a couple guys when I have a roommate and there's just such limited amount of space. So I was like, what are we gonna do? So my friends were like, Allie, it's fine. We'll figure it out. Let's just chill. Let's go get your stuff because at this point the game was over. So we headed over to Gabe's apartment complex where the key was under the mat so I could grab my belongings. But around this point, they made it to Reading, so they're like, hey, where are you guys at? What's the address? Where should we go right now to meet up with you guys? So we told them, hey, just meet us at this apartment complex. So they went to Gabe's apartment complex. They didn't go to his apartment because we left his apartment. We were like, you know what? It doesn't make any sense for us to get the stuff right now because we're about to meet up with the guys. Let's just hang with them for a little bit and we'll get it later. So. When they got there, we met up with them, and we decided to go swimming. So my ex Gabe, he had a hot tub and a pool in his apartment complex, and he needed a key to get in there, but everyone pretty much hopped the fence who went to my college and just used the pool all the time. It was close, the security didn't really monitor it too well, but when it was after curfew, they sort of did, and it was super late at this point, so I was nervous, but we went anyways, we hopped the fence, we went swimming, we were in the hot tub, it was a good time. 
Then it started to get really late and I was like, you know what, we're gonna get busted and then they're gonna try to find out what apartment number we belong to and we don't belong to any of them. I don't wanna get in trouble. We should go get my things from Gabe's apartment and dip. So we walked over to Gabe's apartment and I'm whispering to all my friends like, dude, what are we gonna do about the guys? Like, I don't know what to tell them. They can't sleep in my dorm. Like, I don't have any place to have them stay. At this point, I didn't have a ton of friends in Reading because I had just moved here. So it wasn't like I had friends with apartments that we could all crash at. Like I started doing towards the end of the year when I had visitors. So anyways, we get to Gabe's apartment. I unlock the door. We're all inside. And I felt really bad bringing the guys in there. He had told me it was fine to have my friends in there and even for us to spend the night. But obviously he didn't know I was going to bring guys over. And it wasn't scandalous. Like this was like some guy I was talking to or something. They were just guys we went to high school with and they were with us when we went to get my stuff so we bring him inside and I'm really nervous like okay he could come back at any moment he was coming all the way from Reno Nevada mind you but I didn't know when he was going to come back my friends were like Allie it's fine he's literally in a different state right now I doubt he's gonna show up at like 12 or 1 in the morning right now that's just not gonna happen just chill so we decided to stay for a little bit I started to loosen up we ordered pizza we're hanging out having a good time we weren't planning on spending the night there we were just sort of trying to stall to figure out something to tell the guys I felt really bad because they drove all that way to hang out with us and then I just didn't want to kick them out you know so as we were there, I went to his computer because fun fact, actually in addition to grabbing my stuff, this was right around the time where I started my YouTube channel. I basically had that one video, it wasn't out yet, but the footage for that video, because I used his camera to record it on, was on his computer. So he told me that I could get the footage from that and email it to myself and everything. So when I was there, I logged into his computer to send myself the footage from my first YouTube video, which I posted like, I don't know, a couple weeks later or whatever. So when I went to do that, to send myself the footage for my first YouTube video, his iMessages popped up. Now, if you have a Mac computer, you might know that sometimes your iMessages on your iPhone sync to your Mac computer and you have to delete them separately. So if you deleted messages on your phone, they would still be on there unless you manually went in and deleted them yourself. So naturally, I read the iMessages. Yeah, I know that was snooping, but this guy was someone I was with for a very long time and he was caught red-handed cheating on me towards the end of the relationship. I have a ton of videos where I talk about that. So naturally, I was pretty curious when I saw them popping up and it was a bunch of girls he was talking to. That's actually how I found out that he got a tattoo in Reno of, I'm not even gonna say what it was of. So I started reading the messages and I started to get really pissed. I was like, okay. You know what? Because this is when we were dating. The messages, like the dates on them and stuff, it was clear. It wasn't just when we broke up and whatever. So I was like, you know, I don't even really care. We're going to stay here for a while since he wants to be a cheater and he wants to just lie to my face and everything and just completely make me look like a fool. So now I'm like, you know what? Screw Gabe. If he wants to play this game, I can play it better. So this is when we really just started to hang out, have a great time. It was whatever. I was literally, I was doing some weird stuff. One of the guys, they had these Jordans. They were red Jordans, like huge, huge Jordans. So you know how guys have really big feet sometimes? It was like, they were huge shoes. And I put my hands in them and I was like walking on my hands in the shoes, like doing cartwheels and handstands and just weird stuff. All my friends, we were taking selfies and I was really adamant, like you guys do not post anything where it looks like we're obviously in his apartment just because I don't want to give him the satisfaction that we came over here and that we're still hanging out here. Minus the guys. Like, he told me I could have my girlfriends there, whatever. I didn't ask about the guys. I didn't tell him about the guys because I knew he would jump to conclusions thinking I was talking to them or something. But still, I was just like, you know, make it look like a generic background. Like, if you're going to post selfies, post them with the white wall behind us or the carpet or something. So my friends were really careful about that. Some time goes by and I get a text message from Gabe. Immediately, my heart stops. I'm like, okay, someone messed up. He must have seen the guys here. He must have seen that we're in his apartment. But he just texted me saying, hey, I really hope that you came by to get your stuff and I hope we can talk when you get back. Blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, whatever. And then he's like, hey, when you get a chance, if you do go by my apartment, which he had no idea if I was there or not at the time, he said, open the closet. I have something for you. So I read this out loud because all my friends were like, oh my gosh, is he coming home? Why did he text you? So I told them everything that he texted me and they were like, dude, what's in the closet? Like, is it a dead body? Knowing him, we were like, what's in the closet? That's just like a weird thing to say, right? So we go to open the closet. There's nothing in there. We go to the closet on his porch and there it is. It's this huge poster board where I really wish I still had this so I could like read it to you guys. But he wrote a rap slash song slash poem for me. Basically being like, 
I'm sorry I cheated, I'm sorry I lied, I'm sorry for everything I did, please take me back, right? And it was super cringy. It was one of those things, like, I was so embarrassed that everyone had to see that, that I couldn't stop laughing. So I was just like, this is pathetic. Like, you have to be kidding me. He really has the nerve to, like, think that he deserves to even, like, ever get me back in life, right? And at the bottom of this wrap he made me, there's two boxes, yes or no. And he's saying, basically, check yes or no. Like, if we're ever going to be together again or we're never going to be together again. And I checked no. And then my friend Alexa, she was like, dude, that's so mean because at this point, we didn't know about a lot of the things that he had done. I found out about like minimal cheating, but I didn't know about like all the other crazy stuff that came out later after we broke up that he was like really good at hiding. So my friends were like, oh no, that's so sweet. And they like crossed off the no where I checked it. And I was like, okay, now it looks like I meant to check yes. Like I accidentally checked no. So I ended up just like crossing off yes, crossing off no. At this point I was just really pissed off because like I said, I just found all those messages in his laptop and I was just not having it. I'm like, you know what? like. Whatever. April was already passed out in Gabe's bed. We were just like, you know what, okay, I guess we're gonna crash here, but I still don't want the guys to because I feel bad. So Alexa and I devised a little plan. And I actually have like live pictures from this at the end for like how we got caught from this. So just hold tight. We changed her contact name on my phone to be Gabe, my ex-boyfriend. And then I went in the other room and she texted me as Gabe saying, hey, I'm coming back home from Reno early. I'm like 10 minutes away. I read that text out loud and we still didn't know if this plan was foolproof or not. We didn't know if the guys were A, going to believe it or B, going to care. They might have just been like, oh, whatever, we'll meet him then if he wants to come home. Like, I'll say what's up to the guy. But they freaked out. I read that out loud and they were like, bruh, we finna dip. Are you serious? He's coming home right now. I heard he's crazy. Like, deuces, we're peacing out. We're leaving right now. We're gonna drive back home. And so they ran out the door. They just like rummaged up their belongings and they dipped out the door. They just left. We didn't even have a chance to stop them or say goodbye at all. And then when they were outside in the parking lot, they kept texting us. So we kind of thought maybe they wanted us to go outside and meet them or something. Like they assumed that we were all going to leave, but we were just like, yeah, we're gonna have to face him. We're sorry. We're gonna like talk to him when he gets here. So they were like, okay, we understand. Ended up sleeping in their car and left early in the morning. <laughs> So I feel really bad about that because like I said, they drove super far basically just to hang out with us for a couple hours and then leave again. But it was super fun when they were there. So we spent the night there and then in the morning we went back to my dorm, we got ready and then we decided, just the girls and I, because the guys had left at this point, we were like, we want to go river rafting. So I had bought these rafts with my ex Gabe, like he and I bought them along with one of our other friends. So they were all like our rafts technically, but they were freaking ginormous. So we kept them at Gabe's house because the other guy didn't even live in Reading. So they were at Gabe's house and we wanted to use them because they were like still partly mine. You know, I had like 33% ownership. So we went back to Gabe's apartment. We were super sketched, like, oh my gosh, he's going to come home, which it really wouldn't matter. But again, we just weren't trying to see him or anything. And then we went rafting on the river. We came back. He still wasn't home yet. So we put the rafts back and it was fine. Also, just a side note, we cleaned his entire apartment. Like any sort of mess we made, I took out his trash. I made his bed, like the whole shebang. So it was as if we were never even there. Not like I wasn't going to tell him. It just I'm saying that we were really respectful about the way we left his house. Monday rolls around. So at this point, my friends had left. We had our fun. They left, right? So Gabe came back from Reno and he started calling me off the hook. I didn't know why. He just wanted to see me in general. He wanted to talk to me in general. I didn't even really think it was related to us having the guys there or anything. He was leaving me a bunch of voicemails because I wasn't answering. Then I get a call from April who was there that night. She had slept in Gabe's bed with me, everything. She calls me and I answer April's call because I'm like, oh, I'll talk to April. Like, I love April. I answer her call and she basically says, yo, Gabe called me, he's freaking out, he knows that we had guys there. So automatically I was like, somebody snitched, who told him? It wasn't like I wasn't going to tell him, but I wanted to be the one to tell him when anybody did, obviously. So I was just super annoyed, like, wow, really? Like, I have some fake friends right now. Like, I don't know who told him, but that sucks. And she interrupted me and she was just like, no, 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 no. Actually, he said that he has one of their Jordans. Like, one of them left their red Jordan, right? And I have a picture, so I'm gonna insert it like sometime throughout the end of this video so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So I was like, they really left their shoes? Like, are you kidding me? Who, how, how dumb are they? Like, I know they rummaged up everything super quick to like go in their car, but how do they drive home four hours with one shoe? And those were nice shoes. Like, aren't Jordans pretty expensive? Like, how do you leave one of those? I ended up calling the guys and I was like, yo, 
which one of you messed up? Who let their Jordan in my ex's apartment when we weren't supposed to be there or whatever? And they were like, oh, I have both my shoes. Like, I'm pretty sure. And they went to check and everything. They're like, yeah, I have both my shoes. I definitely would have noticed that. So I was like, all right, I don't know how he knows then that you guys were wearing those types of shoes. Like, he didn't know who was at my apartment. He didn't know that it was Michelangelo and Romeo or anything. He just knew what kind of shoes one of the guys was wearing. Then... <laughs> Gabe starts texting me. I hadn't even had a chance to listen to his voicemails yet, but I already knew what was going on. It was everything that April told me, like that he found out that there was a guy who's Jordan in his apartment, right? He texts me and I was like, how did you know that we had guys there? He sends me a picture of the Jordan and I figured that he was like holding it in his hand and then that he took the picture of it or something. Then he sends me another picture and it was of me. A selfie of me that I had posted on April's Instagram with just a pretty much a plain background like you couldn't tell where we were but there was a red Jordan right next to my face like it was so far back in the background though that the fact that he had to zoom in on it and like screenshot it zoomed in and send it to me and then call my friends like who's red Jordan was that it's just like beyond me right so I couldn't stop laughing I was like are you kidding me so that's how I found out that we stuck guys into his apartment um, the moral of the story, I guess, is, uh, I mean, the thing is, he didn't even really care. Once I told him, like, who the guys were and everything, he was just like, oh, for sure. It, it was actually fine, but I just thought this was a funny story because it was, like, the mystery of the Red Jordan, and all my friends were just so confused as to how he knew that, so... Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe. Leave a comment below if you've ever been in a situation like that where people found out your whereabouts or who you were with based off of a social media post or some type of clue and then they got to the bottom of it and then you were caught. So hopefully you weren't doing something really bad because for me, we didn't have ill intentions. It just obviously he wasn't going to be too pleased about that or whatever. He didn't even care though. So Thank you guys again for watching. Be sure to subscribe to 7 Days of Slay as well, and I'll see you next time. Later, alligators. Bye.